So outputting any kind of ACF Pro repeater field information isn't actually possible directly inside Elementor. So we're going to need to use a third party plugin and there are several available. The one we're going to be using in this video is my personal favorite, which is the dynamic content for Elementor plugin. If you don't have this, I would recommend taking a look at it and grabbing it because it opens up so many possibilities. There's a link in the description down below for you to check it out and take a look for yourself. It is an affiliate link, but it's up to you whether you want to use it or not. Okay. So so what exactly do we have set up and how do you go about actually outputting the repeater fields? Well, first of all, you need to make sure you've got the dynamic content for Elementor plugin installed. And you also need to make sure you've got at least one repeater field set up as part of ACF. So what we're going to do in this video is you can see on the right hand side of this particular page layer, we've got the working hours section. This is made up of a repeater region or repeater field with three different individual meta fields. We've got the location the actual hours and the day of the week. We open up our working hours. You can see this is a repeater field and inside there we have three simple fields, two tech fields and a text area for the office location, day of the week and the hour. So we've got everything set up the way that we need. So now we can go and actually include this information inside our template using dynamic content for Elementor. So inside the theme builder in Elementor, I've got a template set up for my jobs. What we're gonna do is click to edit this and you can see we've got this working hours section. Let's go ahead, remove that, and let's rebuild it from scratch. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use one of those dynamic content for Elementor sections. So let's type in repeater, and in there you'll see we've got ACF repeater. We can see it's a dynamic content for Elementor option because it's got this little D icon in the corner. Let's drag that over underneath our working hours heading. And the first thing it says is select the ACF repeater fields you want to use. So what we need to do is come over to the left hand side underneath the ACF repeater field. We can just go ahead and type in what we're looking for. Typing in working or working hours, which is the name of this particular custom repeater region. You can see we've got job details, working hours and the working hours repeater. So it tells us where this is located. Let's choose the option from there. Underneath it says, where do you want to retrieve the data from? Is it the current post or do we want a custom current user or current author and so on? So there's a range of different locations you can grab dynamic data from for the ACF repeater. For this example, we want it to come from the current post. Then we have three different display modes. We can have the option for subfields, HTML and tokens, or we can use a template. Now I'm going to cover two of these in this video. We're going to take a look at the subfields and the template. These give you the most flexible options. But if you take a look at the HTML and tokens, you can see this effectively gives us a little bit of HTML code. You can see that outputs the data on the right hand side. Let's go back to our display mode. Now underneath you can see it says we've got subfields and we can add an item in here. So if we open this up, this goes ahead and allows us to choose what subfields we want to reference. Now our subfields are basically the fields that we have inside a repeater region. In this example, the location and so on. So what we need to do is go and insert or tell it what we want. So you can see it says select the field. So the first thing we want to do is grab the very first one, which is the office location. So let's come here and type in office and there's our office location. We'll select that from the list. And now you can see we've got the locations being inserted into our design. You can see we underneath we can choose the ACF type. What type of data are we pulling in? This example is just simple text. You can see that just sets it up. We can choose then how we want to display this. Do we want to use H1 through 6, spans, divs, paragraphs, and so on? We'll set this to be a P for paragraph tag. You can then come in and style this if you want to and apply colors, typography, and so on. We're gonna keep this really simple. And if you want to, you can actually link this out. So if you had custom links inside your repeater regions, then you could use this option to link out to the relevant data. Let's go and add in two more fields. So add another one in. This time we're gonna choose the second field, which we take a look is the day of the week. So let's go and type in day. There's the right options. So we'll choose that. We can see this is text one more time. Again, we're going to set this to be P in this example. The style, we can change things inside there if we want to. So let's add our third and final one in. So we'll add another item. Again, I'm going to go and choose the right field. Let's type in hours. Make sure we choose the right option, which is working hours. And there you can see there's our three pieces of data. And again, we can choose how we want this to be displayed. If it's a text area and so on, whether we want to use the P tag, spans, divs, and so on. And now we can customize the style and look and feel and so on of all this. So for example, if you want to change the size of this, you can easily come into our text options, adjust our typography. And let's say we want to set this to like size 12. You can see that shrinks everything down a little bit. Same thing goes. We can change to whatever we want. 
and we now have our repeater information displayed inside here. So next up, we can customize various aspects of this. We can choose the skin if we want to. Now, currently this is set to be grid, but you can change this to just plain old text if you wanted to, and you see it stacks it one on top of each other. You can get rid of the separate if you don't want to use one, or you can change this as like masonry. So depending upon the kind of content, whether this is images and so on, you could set this to be laid out the way that you want. Now, I particularly like the option for the, the table, which actually shows you in a nice table layout, or for example, the list option. Let's set it back to table, and here you can change some other options. So we can say we want to put a heading in so people can understand what each of these actually refers to. And you can see that now outputs the data. If you want to apply filters, if you've got a more advanced amount of information being output by your repeater region, you could do that, and then you can add conditions and set up various different parameters. You can also choose the source, so you can see this is currently set the same, but if you wanted to, you could change this and grab in different source information should you desire. So there's the first and easiest way to do this, and so we'll click on Update. We'll take a look at this by previewing it. And you see there's our working hours. Before we move on, let's have a quick word from today's video sponsor. Independent Analytics is simplifying analytics for WordPress users. It's user-friendly and 100% GDPR compliant. It's my go-to plugin that provides clear insights into website traffic and popular content with a manageable statistics overview. It offers critical information in a visually appealing, intuitive dashboard for free. If you need more features such as real-time analytics, campaign link tracking, WooCommerce analytics, or email reports, you may want to consider upgrading to the Pro version. Now, if you're ready to elevate your analytics experience, visit independentwp.com to download the plugin and explore more for yourself. We can create custom templates to use inside you. So what we're going to do, we come back to our ACF repeater. What we're going to do is we're going to change this over to template. We'll select template, and you see now that still pulls in some basic information. So we can come into our skin. We'll just uncheck this option, and now we're basically starting with a blank canvas. Let's select our template, or we can go ahead and add a new template from inside you. We'll take a look at the templates and how they're built in a moment. So let's go and search for our template. So we're going to type in hours, which is what I've kind of called this one. And there's our Elementor library section. We'll select that from the list. And there is our nicely styled and laid out repeater region using as a custom template. Let's update this and take another quick preview. And as you can see, things now look a little nicer and a little neater than the table format. But how have we created this template and what do you need to do? Really simple. All we're going to do is come back out of the Elementor editor into Elementor templates and choose the option for saved templates. We don't use the theme builder because we don't have access to what we need inside there. All we want to do is create a section template. I've already done that inside here, so let's go and take a look at what my template looks like. Let's edit this with Elementor. And this is my basic template. If I expand the navigator from the right-hand side, you can see things are broken down into two different containers nested inside a parent container. And all we have is three ACF fields. So let's get rid of the first one, which is the location. And I'll show you how you actually insert this data. So now we've emptied that out. We're going to go ahead and add in the right info. If we scroll through our different widgets, you can see we've got these dynamic, ooh, or a dynamic content for Elementor widgets. And the one that we want is the ACF fields option. So we'll drag that into our container. And all we need to do is choose what field we want to reference. So again, if we take a look at our fields, office location is what we want. So let's come in, type in location. That now shows us anywhere we've got location. This example, we want this first one. And you see, now that pulls in Cardiff, we can choose what type of data. Again, like we've seen, a couple more options inside you. Text is perfectly fine. And if you want to customize aspects of this, you've got all the options inside you, including things like settings for the text before and after, your source, fallback, and so on. And you can style it, all the things you're kind of used to. That is really all there is to it. We click on Update, and we've now created that template. And that template can now be used inside any other template we create or any other page where we want to use the ACF repeater function that's part of dynamic content for Elementor. So as you can see, everything is now working the way we would expect it to. It's incredibly simple to set everything up, but you do still need to have a third-party plugin like Dynamic Content for Elementor to be able to use repeater regions in your Elementor designs. It would be nice to see this supported natively, but until that time, we do have to rely upon third-party tools like Dynamic Content for Elementor.
Now, if you want to learn more about this plugin and find out what other things it can do, I'll link to a playlist in the corner and in the description below so you can check out tons of videos I've created on using this particular plugin. And hopefully what it'll demonstrate is it is a powerhouse that opens up so many possibilities to expand what Elementor can do straight out of the box. As always, all applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care. Thank you.